Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lunchtime Detroit Lions. Sog is brought to you by the Detroit Lions on the Prowl on the Belly Up Sports Network. Today, we're going to talk about Detroit Lions news and rumors. But before we get into all that, I want to bring in our brand new member of the Detroit Lions on the Prowl, Rachel Marie Valor. What is up, guys? I am so happy to be here with Jim and Kurt and Mike. A lot of great guys. They really know their stuff. Just hoping to be able to contribute just as much and have some fun. Of course, today we're going to go over some trivia, Wall of Fame, your comment cards, and question of the day. So let's get to it. Right now. Let's go. Welcome back to the show, everybody. And uh, today we have Rachel Marie from Rachel Marie Supports also on her channel. So tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and your channel and, and what you like to do and stuff like that for the Detroit Lions. So uh, I am actually a Detroit Lions fan down in Orlando, Florida, uh, you know, carrying a little bit of one pride down here with me. There's actually quite a few of us down here, believe it or not. But I um, I've always it's so been, cold here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The snowbirds. You should see spring training. I was there, what, two weeks ago, and it's just snowbird city. Seriously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, being down here in Florida, I kind of created my channel as a way to talk to other Detroit Lions fans, you know, uh, a, fan pers- a fan perspective, and got picked up by the DSA, which you are very familiar with as you are also a part of that group. Great, yep. great group of guys um, nice. that just like to talk Detroit football. I do a little bit of parody stuff on my channel to keep it lighthearted, so good. keep it funny. I mean, you got to do that with the Lions, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. We have to be able to laugh at ourselves. And then, of course, there's a little bit of analysis and, and what I think, but it was really just a way to try to get involved with the community kind of being outside of the state of Detroit, but being such a diehard lions fan. Well, it's so good to have you here. And I have to pick your brain today because uh, we've been talking about this for a while, but what do you think about the moves so far from Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell, or the press conferences, all, all this stuff, because we haven't even talked to you about all that yet. So what is your take on the off season so far? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a lot, there's been a lot going on in off season, but you know, I've got to say, I, to this extent, I'm totally behind what the new regime is, is doing. Um, I love Motor City, Dan Campbell's <laughs> press conferences. Um, I know it kind of hit with the national media a little bit differently than it did with us, but I really think he's kind of pulling the, the spirit, the spirit of the city and the spirit of the fans into the conversation. Um, and he, he wants us to believe him. So I'm, I'm there with him and, and I like what Brad Holmes is doing so far. Um, I think we talked about this a little bit before we actually hopped on, but uh, they are kind of just providing you with a picture of what they want to do, not necessarily that all these pieces are going to be permanent, a lot of one-year deals, but I think they're trying to show us the direction that they're heading, and Mm -hmm. it's certainly different than everything that we've done before. So for right now, I'm sipping the Kool-Aid a little bit, just sipping, not, not drinking, not gulping. You know, not not chugging or anything, but I, I like I like where they're heading. Yeah, I do too. I think that there's a lot of moves that, like you said, one year deals. But it, to me, the the oh the press conference. I want to go over that real quick. Um, I think that it's funny that every time Detroit does something, it's evil and and like and Dominican suit. You know, mm-hmm. I, I I think he had like zero penalties for like anything on sportsmanlike or anything last year or something and then in detroit he's a villain villain i mean they were going to hunt him down with like pitchforks and and stuff like that you know the bad oh, boys yeah. come to mind you know the of the detroit piston era had that we always have to be against the world it seems like and it's oh, a detroit yeah. span he gets that one year deal to go back to tampa and it's like yeah. oh sue you know so, yeah yeah and it's funny different. because when he was here He's a villain in in the national media, but when he went to Miami, I think it was like the first year or two, maybe there were some things coming up. But after that, he's a choir boy. He's like the mm-hmm. saint of uh, patron saint of Tampa Bay right now. And I, I I hate the national media, the way they look at the Lions, because everything they do, even 
even though they have a lot of former Lions at this point, with Dan Orlovsky and, you know, Nate Burleson and all that, it still comes out a lot negative to me. What do you think about that? It does. Um, you know, it's really hard, I think, to get around that negative media stereotype when we haven't been able to really produce a winning right. team right. in so long. Um, if if you'll remember, you know, back back a couple of teams that we had with Jim Schwartz and a couple of times that we were in the playoffs, it, it did sound a little bit different those years. You know, people weren't fully really signed on, but it was a lot less negative in the media. So mm -hmm. winning cures everything, you know? Yeah, it, and I don't think really we're going to do much of that next year. I just, I don't, I don't see it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just don't. Um, we go. We got made a couple of trades. Uh, some some unknown quarterback got traded from Detroit. Uh, what did you think about that trade? Uh, it was bittersweet. Of course, mm -hmm. I was definitely a, a very very big Stafford fan. Me too. Um, I really thought he had everything that it took. I just never felt like we had the right pieces around him to make it happen. You know, I'm never gonna buy the narrative that some other quarterback would have had more success with the teams that we had around Stafford here in Detroit. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I do think like, I do think he's kind of coming into maybe the, the final years of his career, the twilight. I mean, he could, he could play until he was 40, but I, for some reason don't see that being the case. And if he uh, wants to go win somewhere, Far be it for me to take that from him. You know, I, I really, I really do want the best for him. And I think that with everything taken into consideration, the the direction that this new regime is heading, whether you want to call it a retool or a rebuild, we 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 did the right thing not putting him through that if that's not the place that he wanted to be. So, you know, best of luck to him in LA. Yeah, true. True. And, and all the people clamoring for the next guy up, well, you got your wish because we have Jared Goff now. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I laugh about that, but I actually think Jared Goff could accomplish something here. It's possible. I'm not going to say he can't because he's done it before, but we'd have to build one heck of a team around him, I think, for that to happen. And I think we're starting with that. I really do. Uh, we got a uh, you know small thing coming up called the draft. And uh, <laughs> I'm just wondering, pick your brain a little, a little bit. What do you think uh, we're going to do with the seventh pick? It doesn't have to be the person, but, you know, what direction do you think they're going to go? Um, You know, I'm really back and forth with this. It, it kind Me of too. just changes well, not really. with what I see day by day. Um, I don't think they're going to go quarterback at this point. I'm, I Not not at seven or or with the their first pick, whether they trade back or, you know, I – it's kind of like this mystery with Brad Holmes. I'm like, I don't, I'm not really sure which side of the roster he's. I, I felt like, you know, previously Quinn was a little bit more predictable. As yeah, far I agree. As draft. Mm -hmm. um, last year, a lot of us had a lot of the draft picks correct. Yeah. Um, but with Holmes, I don't really feel that way. Um, I, I can't figure out if I think he's going to take like the player that he's analyzed and thinks is the absolute best player that's on the board or if he's going to definitely go defense, which is an obvious. I don't obvious see it. Need. I don't see defense there. I don't think there's a top 10 defense. Patrick Sertain, maybe. But and I, I don't yeah, see a big a name nice defensive day, but... guy at seven. But my personal pick is uh, Slater, the offensive tackle out of Northwestern, mm -hmm. is who I would like to get at seven. Then you kick Big V into the tackle in the guard position, and that's a pretty good offensive line. In fact, I mean, yeah, having locked in Decker with a contract extension, get another, you know, really capable young guy, then you've got what it ha you've got what you need to have a great line for, you know, years to come, which would be really, really nice to not have to worry about one. Then thing. Hill at tight end. I think you're setting yourself up for a pretty good run game. You need the run game for that play action pass that Goff likes yeah. a lot. I, I think that's what we're setting up here. And we're setting up speed, speed and more speed. That's Definitely. really what this this offense is. Definitely. It's exciting in a way if they can catch the ball and stay healthy. But um, you know, <laughs> but that's the way it is. You know, it is. They took a they they, they rolled the dice. You know, they took a what one year contracts on a bunch of these guys, and mm -hmm. and 
throw it against the wall and see what sticks <laughs> kind of for this year. Absolutely. <laughs> but they're building through the draft. That is, that is the main signal I get from this free agent period is they're building through the draft. They're going to build through the trade market, I think as well. I don't think we're done there either, but um, they just have to wait and see what they're going to do. Let's go into a little bit about what happened uh, yesterday. Uh, free agent safety Diamante Kazi will sign with the Cowboys after visiting with us. Kind of glad we dodged that bullet, but that's okay. I mean, I, I don't like signing injured players. This show, everybody knows that. But he, he could have been a really good safety, but I, I don't like the injury stuff. I really don't. It's bit us so many times, and I, I just don't, I can't see it anymore. What yeah. do you think about uh, uh, that safety and uh, I mean, I, what you thought about him? I mean, he's gone now. I guess it doesn't matter much. But. <laughs> um. He really, to be completely honest, he wasn't really on my radar, and that's because I do completely agree with you there. Um, the type of injury, that that torn Achilles that he's coming off of. Mm, takes two years. That's Yeah, I mean, that's a rough injury to be coming off of. I mean, you know, somebody was going to give him that, like, one year, prove it, how are you rebounding from this injury deal, but uh, – for that to be us when we have so many other pieces at play and yeah. um, just just other things to to worry about, I think taking somebody off of that type of injury wasn't really it wasn't something that I saw that I saw being realistic for us. Um, so it, it wasn't a, it wasn't a huge loss for me. Like I said, he kind of floated. He was kind of under my radar. Not that he hasn't been great previously, but that's that's a that's a pretty serious injury. Yeah, the Lions narrative of when healthy, I, I just, I hate that term. I just, you know, it's like, oh, when healthy, this guy's great. Yeah, so is Austin Bryant, and so is Deshaun Hand, and so is Ziggy Ansah, and so is, anyway, John Ray Levy. Let's, let's go back a little further. Anyway, um, so <sighs> Micah Parsons, Tara, he has something in his background. Um, I don't know if they're going to uh, select him or not. I, I personally don't think so but I guess he's had a couple of meetings with them and his 40 time was 4.39. I mm -hmm. mean, he seems to have, he seems to be a capable linebacker, but he worries me in one respect where I think he's, he's too close to Jared Davis for me. I mean, just that's the feel I get. What do you think I, about Micah Parsons? I mean, realistically, I think with the position that we have in the draft and, you know, he's saying he's had multiple conversations with the Lions already. That totally makes sense because you're not not going to take a look at this guy with with just his athleticism and and, and skill. Um, so, of course, I'm thinking, well, who wouldn't be talking to him no matter what, no matter, you know, who they're going to plan to take. It only makes sense to to look at a guy like Parsons. Um, you know, you you're you're comping him to Jared Davis, which. I hadn't thought about it very much prior to this conversation, but I can actually see what you're saying in that. But, you know, I've also seen a lot of uh, people in the national media making a comp to like Devin white, you know, uh, in Tampa, like a that linebacker that can succeed inside and make plays outside. Um, so I think it makes sense that they're talking to him mm -hmm. personally. I wouldn't be upset if they did end up taking him, um, only because I just have to have a little bit more faith in like, say, Aaron Glenn and, and Dan Campbell to know how to use him. I really mm, think you that's know, a really good point. Yeah, I really think, you know, we can't you can't look at Matt Patricia and his inability to use Jared Davis to his skill set and then apply that to this new regime fairly. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I think Aaron Glenn, um, everything that I've seen so far, not that we completely know his vision for how this defense is going to look or what or what kind of defensive scheme they're going to be using, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that if they did want Parsons, he would know how to use him to the fullest of his abilities. Yeah, I agree with you there. I think that uh, had they had Jared Davis, because, because in the Patricia era, it was basically, I'm going to plug this big slow peg into this round hole yeah. and and because my scheme is so good it's gonna work well doesn't but yep. um, we never found that away out. from it though <laughs> yeah he, he can't budge he's too, too heavy to move but anyway um 
This is terrible jokes on him. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I I got frustrated with that regime after a while. I bought in right away. I did. I, th I thought, oh my gosh, we got a rocket scientist. We got somebody from New England who could really evaluate talent. Yeah. We got another guy that's coaching over there that was uh, you know, won Super Bowls and stuff like this. But as time went on and we started seeing the product on the field, it was just, oh God, we're we're yeah. in the, we're in this again where we're gonna have to rebuild. <laughs> I was with you there, but you know, we had to tuck our tails and say, all right, we were wrong. Yep. On. Yep. Yep. So anyway, we also hire uh, Steve Oliver as the offensive quality control coach, but he's more going to be Frank Haley's right hand man on the offensive line. They're giving that offensive line a lot of attention, which I really, really like. Me what do you too. think about this hire? It's, it comes really late. Don't you think? It is. Um, so I don't know whether to think it was like, I don't want to think I'm choosing to not think that it was an afterthought and rather think that it was so thought out that this is where they ended up. <laughs> um, yeah. Or maybe it's just that he, you know, it, it was something that he had prior commitments before and we just couldn't, you know, get to an agreement right away possible as well. Yeah. It could be something like that. And, you know, to be completely honest, I didn't know very much about him prior to reading about his hire, but um I, I trust his connection because I, I trust Fraley. Um, I do too. So, you, you know, this is throwing it back to kind of what I just talked about with if they do select Parsons and how they would use him is um, giving this new regime at least enough credit to say, I think you know what you're doing. I think you know your vision and where you're heading with this. Um, I, I do trust Fraley. I, I, I think, you know, he knows what he wants and that guy that's going to help him make this offensive line the best unit that it possibly can be. So not really knowing too, too much about Oliver's past. Um, that's kind of the stance that I'm taking on it. You know, I think he was in, wasn't he at the university of Illinois? I think he was. Um, I knew he was at the university of Idaho. I did. Maybe that's that. what it was. Maybe I, that, I knew it started with an I, but you know, I'm getting old. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next up, I also think that they are really concentrating on the whole line and uh, my uh, my march for Slater continues <laughs> number seven or 15, whatever we get, because I do think I do think there's a trade in play with New England oh, yeah. or Chicago, Chicago would have to give us the farm. But I think teams are going to want to jump Carolina. I mentioned this yesterday because Carolina is going to be looking for a quarterback. If Carolina can move up and trade with Cincinnati. All that goes out the window. But I'm not sure that we didn't uh, tip our hand or do anything like that by signing a backup quarterback or all that, like people said, or restructuring golf. I think there's a situation where um, teams might want to get to us before Carolina picks, especially if one of those quarterbacks is on the board. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and, and I've actually been reading a lot of that lately too, is like, you know, an article ends with, you just have to figure out how to get ahead of Carolina. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how you do it, Detroit. Yep. And I think New so England may, New England has been doing some crazy things this offseason. I've seen a lot of free agent moves, which I've never seen before over there. They don't usually trade. Well, they trade up, but I, not usually to that high. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. They've been having a wild offseason. So, they really have. <laughs> so, uh, another rumor in Detroit Lions news and rumors that suggests that Detroit Lions are interested in full and former Pro Bowl cornerback AJ Bowie. What do you think about this move? Um, if it becomes a move, <laughs> you know, I, I, I think that the NFL rumors page has gotten quite a few things right. Um, I have seen them get a couple things wrong. Uh, yeah. I think it really depends on, you know, and I wouldn't be mad at the move. Um, Bowie is far from, you know, being a bad corner. We do right. need a slot right. corner. Um, you know, there is that, there's that whole, okay, well, who's the veteran presence in the locker room? I don't think our Uarie is quite the age that we're really calling him the veteran presence in the locker room just yet. Um, and, and like you said, I'm like, I just said, there is a need, there's a hole. Um, not that I'm super into like, here's the whole, let's fill it with just anybody. But I do think Bowie is kind of a nice prospect. Um, you know, he is going to be suspended for the first two games of the yep. 2021 season mm -hmm. um, for his PEDs violation. Um, that's really neither here nor there. Um, 
to me, other than maybe that would make the deal that we gave him, if we gave him a deal, a little bit more cap space friendly. Um, yeah, I agree. I think yeah, that too. I, I wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't it. either. Like, because It's simply because that, that cornerback room right now is uh, is a little thin. So I thin. think <laughs> right now, right now, I mean, who are you starting at slot? Uh, Mike Ford? I mean, could be. Oh, man, I, but I'm I, saying, I, I mean, who yeah, else do you have? I don't, I don't even dislike Mike, for, Mike Ford. I don't, but I don't either. As, I think he's a good slot, player. In the slot, I don't know. Uh, but I guess I, I haven't gotten it. to see much of him lined up at the slot either. So Right. I think he could play it. I really do. But the, the yeah. thing is, is, uh, I, is that your ideal situation? No. Uh, so bringing another corner can't hurt us. I, I yeah. really don't think it can. I think if some of these positions are going to be addressed in the next week or so, and then if not, it'll be the draft. Safety especially, I think, will be in the draft. Yeah. We I definitely agree. need a safety. Uh, I, I'm not roll, I'm not rolling. I'm not willing to roll with uh, Will Harris. I'm sorry. I'm just not. Oh, no. Oh, no. Although, <laughs> but you, you never know. know. You never know because last year's defense was so bad. Mm -hmm. But I think most of it was scheme. I think most of it wasn't the and players themselves, you know? Exactly. That's exactly what I was just going to say. Maybe Will Harris takes takes a leap, you know, without Patricia. So we'll, we'll have to see. <laughs> I, the defensive line looks okay. Mm -hmm. You know, if they saw they all stay healthy, they you know, flowers, you got uh, Brockers. What'd you think of the Brockers deal? We got him for like a 12th of never seventh round pick. Uh <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, that that's one of the more genius things I think yeah. Holmes has pulled off in, in free agency. Um, you kind of had to la laugh about the golf comments and them kind of getting back together. Yeah, that's but, funny, um, yeah. They handled it like men. I saw that they worked it out. And, they you know, did. they texted each it, other. It, there. It's, I don't think it was a big deal, but Brocker stood right, he stood up and said, you know, I'm going to text my, that guy and tell him, hey, wait, you know, I'm sorry, you know, whatever. And right. they didn't care. I don't think it was going to be a big deal anyway. But yeah. um, well, I, I have a terminology for what all these contract restructures and the thing is called Disneyland. You, you guys have Disneyland down there. We have <laughs> Disneyland. Disneyland. <laughs> I like it. He is a genius when it comes to cap space, when it comes to like Brockers come on, comes over here. He wouldn't restructure his deal for LA, but he comes mm -hmm. over here and then signs a brand new deal, which is very cap friendly for us this year. Oh yeah. Uh, and, and, and we get a run stuffing um, defensive. I could say end even uh, for, for us. He played edge. He's played yeah. uh, like a three technique almost. Uh, he could do that too. Honestly. Yeah. But uh, so we could actually run a four, three, 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 five, three, four, whatever we want to run. I, I like that. We're very yeah, versatile. Definitely, right now. definitely helps that he's versatile and you can move him around. Yeah. Yeah. And he can move around on his own too, which is really good because some of our guys can't. Yeah. <laughs> he's not the same Let old big slow. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Turtle to vine. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so. I'm going to go into the Detroit Lions on the prowl trivia question for the day. And I'm going to give this one to Rachel and we're going to see what you do. Oh, man. It's okay. You don't, it, <laughs> I told Jeremy yesterday, I said, you don't have to be right. It's fine. All right. Since the 2010 season, which divisional rival do the Lions have the best win loss record? So you got three choices. You know, it's, it's A, B, and C. 2010. Since the 2010 season, oh, since, so since 2010. then to now, who Ooh. do you have the best record against? I want, you know, in that time, just thinking about the teams that have been in the NFC North, I, I, this is a guess because honestly, the only one that I'm sure that it's not is the Packers, or at yeah. least I think I'm sure that it's not the Packers. I'm going to go with the bears. You have got it right. Ding, 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 ding. We don't have special effects here. We can't afford that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but you got it right. Yeah, the, right. The correct answer is the Chicago right. bears, much to my wife's chagrin. And, oh, uh, <laughs> and uh, the winners this week were Pete Ledesma from Facebook and uh, Chris from Amino, something like that. I'm sorry. Our goal here is to butcher every name we possibly can on Detroit Lions on the Prowl. I'm achieving that goal every day. So yeah, that was the uh, trivia question for yesterday. And the answer, I don't have one for today because it is 6 a.m. or something like that. So it's, it's, a, it's uh, oh my Just God, it's early. Yeah. <laughs>
So now we're going to go into your comment car. Oh, no, we're going into the Wall of Fame. I'm sorry. I'm confused, as usual. And uh, we're going into the Wall of Fame. So on the Wall of Fame today, we have North End Ken, Art Allen, Bubba Bo, Detroit Drew, and Midwest Lion on our bronze level. We have Gold Lions and uh, Members Plus, which is our silver level, and Gnomish J. We have Miles Gibbs. No, he is not any relation to Andy, just in case you were wondering. Gold member, Randy Prince, gold member, Gridiron Blitz is a gold member, and Dr. Detroit, the doctor is in. So thank you to everybody on the Wall of Fame. Thank you for being a member. And if you want to join the Detroit Lions on the Prowl membership community, all you have to do is go down to the Join Now button at the bottom of the screen, and we will put you on the Wall of Fame. So I got all that done. That, that was amazing. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. So we're gonna go now to your comments and what you said for today, and we're gonna start out with uh, Wally Royal Viala. I think that's how you say it. And yes, it is my mission to butcher every single name that I, I have on here. Uh, Jim, the reason the Lions seem to need an All Star at every position, which I said yesterday, is because of the officials. Hmm. No. I, we never get any bad calls, do we, Rachel? That doesn't happen here. <laughs> you know, for years, I've been telling people what my dad tells me pretty much every game, and he says the good teams get the calls. That could be. Know. That could be. Know. We haven't been a good team in <laughs> quite a while. So, but I want to. I want to say this: when they were in, the, we were in the Schwartz era. We had pretty good teams, but we still didn't get the calls. Houston Texans. Remember, he guy's knee is down. He gets up and he runs to the end oh, yeah. zone. Schwartz well, almost you know. pops that blood vessel in the side, the side of his head here. So, <laughs> well, I guess the next question from there stems to: Okay, well, how good do we have to be for how long to start? I, I think the we call? need to be seventeen and zero before we start getting <laughs> calls. Exactly. And then it might be an aberration, so they're going to they're going to make sure they call against us next year just to make sure we're we're good. I think. Exactly. <laughs> Who you got next, uh, uh, Rachel? Next, we have Luke Brunskill. He says, I've been wanting a two tight end scheme for a while. Thought that was the point with James slash Hawk. Pull the old Patriot way, confuses the defense and able to have a dynamic threat. Don't think that would be the plan going forward in this new regime, considering Coach Lynn does not lean that way. I wish so. Mm. When you say Patriot way, I almost threw up. But <laughs> I, just, I can't, oh, I can't do that. Uh, with Jesse James and, and Hawkinson, I, the deal was that Jesse James was acquired before they went ahead and drafted Hawkinson. So it made James kind of expendable. To be, to be honest, I think they made a big deal for someone that they thought they needed. And then it came you know, draft time and, and they decided on Hawkinson. Hawkinson is the much better athlete. Uh, so I think that's the situation there. If you go pits, which I think this is the point of this comment, I might be wrong, but if you go pits here and you've got Hawkinson and pits and it, that is kind of the old new England way, you know, and, and, I, and it did, it does throw them off because they're trying to put linebackers at those positions or they're going to have to be in the dime, like every single down with us, because we could put a two tight end set. We could run the ball. We could throw mm -hmm. the ball. They don't know what we're going to do. Uh, and, and if you have the, the wide receivers that we have right now, that might be a good idea since most of ours can't catch as well as Ebron at this point, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's okay. You know, we'll, we'll see how they all do and everything like that. But what do you think about that, Rachel, about the, uh, two tight end scheme? Um, the first thing I wonder is, you know, I, I, I like that it basically makes, diverts the attention. However, mm -hmm. You know, when I think about his his verbiage, the, the use of the word the Patriot way, those were also great receiving tight ends. Not that Pitts and Hawkinson are not. Um, I guess my question comes down to Goff's ability to make big plays to his tight ends, considering I find him to be more of a quarterback that needs separation to make big plays like that, which is mm -hmm. obviously why we've gotten him this speedy wide receivers and then of course you know your tight ends can draw the attention away your speedy wide receiver can go out there and goth can make the big play oh i like but i like hawk hawkinson on, on a linebacker and pitts on a linebacker too. that is a complete mismatch and when yeah. 
Campbell started his press conference, he was like, we're trying to create mismatches. Yeah. That's what we're trying to do. We're going to exploit the mismatches and we're going to win those battles. And I, I think, I think Pitts is a big mis- mismatch for anybody. And and it would be, a, it would be a nice piece. Although I don't like building outside in. I just don't. Right. I mean, and, and you know, like I said, I'm just kind of going by his verbiage. Like I yeah. see the Patriot yeah. Way yeah. two tight end set being Aaron Hernandez, Rob Gronkowski, yeah. Yeah. And they're they're not Gronk, only Gronk can create some separation though, at least in his early years he could. He can, he could, he could at that time for sure. Um, but you know, um, I guess there therein lies the question for me. I, I'm look, I'm thinking like, oh, he's Patriot way, the two tight end set, like using them both as mainly receiving tight ends. Although they're they were both good blocking tight ends as well. Right. Uh, I I would be more interested in seeing that two tight end set for the blocking. I agree with you. You know. Mm-hmm. But if you're, if you, I, I know uh, we got Hill for blocking and, mm-hmm. and I like that idea, but if you had him and Hawkinson and Hawkinson would release it, he's a, he's a monster out there. He really is. He can block and do the whole thing. So I think, I think we have a pretty good tight end uh, lineup right now. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not sure that I see them going that route. I don't want them to go that route to be honest. And if there were other people in the draft, I would go defensive and defensive tackle, but there isn't those people. There just isn't not at seven. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Rashawn Slater from, uh, and I'm going to say it every show until they do it, but <laughs> trying to put that little seed in their, in their ear. Okay. Andrew Saleh says, or Sally says, I want Waddle. I love what we're doing at wide receiver right now. None of them are number ones though. I think Ch- Chase or Waddle would be that true number one think the Rams have a true number one when Goff was there either but you know I think that's how they played the game over there or maybe that's how they're doing it here what do you think of Waddle and what do you think of Chase um personally I don't think Jamar Chase will be on the board I don't either um so I've definitely been reading a lot about Waddle I I do like Waddle I will say that I'll, I'll throw my name in the hat for Waddle right now I mean I don't know if it's necessarily what I want a, a wide receiver at seven to be completely honest, but do like Jalen Waddle's skill set. Um, you know, mm-hmm. everything I read about him is that he hits his max speed almost right away. Yep. Um, you know, he's got like 10 yards on the defenders in, in a lot of his tape. Um, but he's got the ability to create separation. He's fast but he also has a really nice contested catch rate as well. He does. Mm-hmm. He's almost like the combination of what we previously had so many of. I mean, great contested catch wide receivers, um, but he's also got that speed and and speed combined with being a very precise route runner. So mm-hmm. I, I, I really like what I see in him um, at wide receiver. Like I said, I'm not totally sold on a wide receiver at seven, but I do like Jalen Waddle. I'll put that. Well, there's the big three. So Devonta Smith is the other one in that equation. And I kind of like him. I know he's light. I know people are going to say that and whatever, but you know what? That kid can return kicks. He can return punts. He's explosive on like a bubble screen or, or whatever. That guy is explosive and he is very shifty when it comes to like in the middle of the field, he can make people miss. I mean, I, I like this kid and he has speed. So I like what you're getting in either. Yeah. Now, in either of all three of these guys, I think would be a welcome addition to Detroit. Although I don't think they're going to pick a wide receiver. I just don't. I don't, I don't either. So I wouldn't have our hopes up, but you know, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be mad at anything that they do. I, I just want to see what their vision is through the draft. Oh, I could get mad at things that they do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I could. I, I've done it before and I'm pretty sure. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Who the hell is that guy? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we did. Everybody did that for Tavai. There's not one of us that knew who the heck he was. Oh, Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to put a positive spin on that one that year was interesting. Yeah, it was. <laughs> All right. Who we got next, Rachel? Next, we have Theodore Carer. I hope yes. it's Carer. We don't he care. Says, we don't know. <laughs> maybe we'll find out. He maybe. says, hits from Florida is my first pick only can't miss in the draft can line up anywhere defenses will have to account for him and he will upgrade the quarterback position i like pitts i like pitts a lot he's a beast his catch radius is outstanding Mm -hmm. he's a mismatch for just about everybody that they put on him the linebackers can't cover the guy he's very fast 
can't remember what he ran. Uh, it was a four, four speed, something like that for that guy, that big six, four, he's a big yeah. dude and can run. They, they had likened him to Calvin Johnson. I'm like, pump the brakes, man. Come on, man. <laughs> I you ain't no Calvin Johnson. Don't do that. Don't do that to this poor kid. But, um, and when I said, I don't care about the names because we butcher names here. It's kind of what we do. So it's not like we don't care about your name, sir. We just, you know, we butcher names. That's what we do. That's what we're good at. So, yeah, I, I like Pitts a lot, actually. And um, But I don't think he's the only can't miss in the draft because I'm going to go back to my pick. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> can't, do it every, can't do it every time. But anyway, what do you think about Pitts from Florida? God, I love him as a player. I mean, how can you not? But, oh, man, I don't want another top 10 tight end. I just, I don't think... I don't think it necessarily makes sense this year. Now, hear me out. It make, I think it makes sense in the, like, just take the best player available on the board at that time yep. method. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to say that that method is incorrect by any means. It works for some people. It has not panned out for us very well. And, you know, we signed Hill. We have Hawkinson. Um, I... I so, some in summation, I really like Pitts as a player. If we stay at seven, I don't know that I'm for taking him at seven. I have a Green Bay friend, and that is very – it's awful to admit that on the air. But, um, <laughs> no, I mean, I had a – he was telling me at one point, he says, you know, the Lions always draft for need. They never go best player available. They, they just don't. On top of that, they, they go for a reach for need instead of – you know, just drafting the guy that's there. And for me, um, I actually do see that. I see that we we reached for Tavai. I think we reached for a, a bunch of these players that we could have got later. And um, and because of the need and because of the fit and the scheme fit and all that, for me, get the guy who has the most skill and the best person available. So it's like, it's not only the best player, it's how that player acts in and off the field, on the field, you know, and how he's going to represent your team in some cases. But I'm not saying you have to be squeaky clean at every position. You can't be not to win in the NFL, but I don't think we, I, I got to disagree. I do not think we draft for, for uh, best player available. I think we, we usually draft for need. Mm -hmm. we, we needed a tight end, you know, and a tight end with that kind of skill set. Hawkinson was perfect for that choice, but I still think that was he the best player on the board? I don't know, you know, for that need, for that, for that pick, a top 10 tight end. We'd like to do that a lot, actually. But um, <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't think we do that. Uh, so uh, let's see, Jimmy Short, since it's in division, the Bears would have to swap first round picks, give up their second this year and a first and third next year, in my opinion. I agree with you, man. Everybody named Jim is so smart. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, but I agree with you. I, I don't know. I would trade the pick to the Bears. I think it's too far to drop, number one, uh, in a rebuild. But it depends on what you get. If you get, like you're saying, a couple first-round picks or maybe a, a second and a first and third next year, I, I'm not going to balk at that because we're stockpiling draft picks for the future. And so uh, – I. I would, I would go down for that. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I agree with you, but it's, it, it's gotta be a haul. It, it, it has to be. It's really gotta be a haul because if it's anything short of a haul, I mean, that'd be the first, that'd be the first real, real complaint people have about Brad Holmes. I think because yeah. he hasn't proven himself to be the type of guy that would give it up for anything less. So um, you know, keeping, keeping with that mentality, it would have to be a haul. Yeah, I agree with you. And especially to someone in division, who's going to probably pick a quarterback that would probably be playing against us two times a year for the foreseeable future. If the bears ever get a real quarterback, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They won't because they signed Andy Dalton, but, um, and I, I think they're trying to tank because they also got, uh, Christian Jones is one of their signees and uh, Desmond Trufon is also another one of their signees this year. So yeah. we know they're tanking at this point. <laughs> and I, uh, I saw a lot of excited bears fans about the Christian Jones wow. signing with Chicago. And I thought, that's just weird. <laughs> you might weird. fit their defense more than you fits ours. I mean, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. You know, they already got really capable linebackers. Mm -hmm. We don't. So, you know, 
Okay, last one. Let's wrap up the comment cards with this one. So this one comes from Miles Gibbs. He says, awesome show today. I'm assuming that was yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like having Jeremy on the show, he has good opinions and seems very knowledgeable about what's, that's all I see. That's all right. What's going <laughs> on as well. What's going on as well. <laughs> ah, the, the, the wonders of, uh, of uh, stuff that I do, you know, and I, I made all this stuff. So yeah, that was my fault. But anyway, yeah, Miles, uh, Jeremy is the head editor, chief editor now at um, Pride of Detroit website. So yeah, he has very knowledgeable opinions. He has credentialed and he does go and talk to the players and had Deuce Staley on his show. And, and no, he, he's a big name in our community. And I really appreciated his help yesterday because I just reached out and said, uh, what you doing about six o'clock in the morning tomorrow? I said, eh, not much. <laughs> He's such a good guy. I really appreciate him. So let's go right now to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, do you think that the Detroit Lions uh, are, are signing players for the future, or they're just playing, playing, uh, signing players that are kind of stop gaps at this point. What do you think? Do you think that the, that some of these people are actually going to make the team for a couple of years, or be re-signing after a year, or do you think that we're we're just kind of take kicking the tires and uh, putting a team out there so that we can have a team out there next year? <laughs> so we're going to put that in there, and I'm going to go to you, Rachel, for your final thoughts today. First, I'm going to say I really appreciate you and and uh, being up this early in the morning and that that uh, that I can't even imagine, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I can, but I'm so I get up so early. But we know I really appreciate you joining us and, and being a part. And uh, uh, thank you very much for doing this. Yeah, of course. I mean, like I said at the start, I am excited to be here. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to put out a lot of my own content lately. Just busy, busy times. So, you know, when you approach me and you're like, well, we film at six. I'm like, I could get up at six, like <laughs> a couple times a week to talk some Lions football. And I'm definitely glad that I did. I do miss talking Lions football. I want to talk Lions football. And I am really excited about, you know, what we've got going on, the direction that this new front office seems to have us heading in. So I know we're going to have plenty of good things to be talking about coming up, or at least, you know, juicy things that they're not <laughs> good in our opinion. Um, right. So yeah, I'm super, super excited to be here and, and continue to see what we have to talk about coming up. That's your final thoughts for today. That is my final thoughts for today. It's, it's like a, just a, you know, thankfulness to be here and just get to talk Lions football. It's it's pretty simple today. Today is the Rachel coming out party for yep. Detroit Lions on the Prowl. Really appreciate you being here. I appreciate each and every one of you guys that rock with us. We had a hundred people in the premiere yesterday. Just amazing. Uh, just thank you very much. I love to interact with all the fans and everybody that's that loves the Lions just as much as we do. Very knowledgeable fan base. Our, our Lions fan base is one of the smartest fan bases I've, I've ever seen. Well, I'm going to say most of them. <laughs> we, we have a couple people out there that are questionable, but you know what I'm saying? For the most part, our fans are pretty good. Um, but, you know, I think that uh, number one, we want to wish Kurt Steele and uh, Mike Jones speedy recoveries, both, um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that Mike and, and Kurt will both be back on Monday, but we'll see how that all goes. And we'll see if we have another surprise co-host on Monday. <laughs> I doubt it. I really do. I think we're going to have both guys back uh, on Monday. So we'll see how that all goes, but get well soon guys. Uh, really appreciate you as well. And so, and my final thoughts today, you know, whatever you do in life, you got to boss up, ball out and be the best version of you that you can be. And for Rachel Marie, goodbye. Have a good day. You too. Thanks, Jim.